Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to worship. Um, it's good to see everyone here today. Um, welcome on this rainy uh, Sunday morning, but it's wonderful to have the rain. Uh, if you're a guest worshiping with us this morning, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we'd invite you to please uh, say hi in the comments so we can welcome you and reach out to you. A couple of announcements that I want to call to your attention. Uh, first of all, Virtual Coffee Hour will be uh, right after worship this morning. It's really a, a fun way to stay connected with people or to get to know other people better. Uh, the link for that was in the announcements that you received on Friday. Then also the Synod is hosting a book discussion on the book White Fragility. And that will be every Tuesday afternoon during the month of August from 1 until 2. Uh, registration information was in the weekly announcements and you do need to register for uh, this book discussion uh, and you register through the Synod from that link. Then also Pub Theology is this uh, Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock by Zoom and the Zoom uh, invitation and link uh, is either in the announcements or on our Facebook page with the uh, invite uh, for Pub Theology. I think we'll have a really good conversation this week. There's some really uh, interesting and challenging questions. On a lighter note, I uh, had a conversation this week at our Dean's Conference call with the, the Bishop. Every couple or three weeks, all the Deans of each conference, and I'm one of them, gathers together with the Bishop and Synod staff to talk about uh, how things are going. And there was a number, a lot of conversation this time on in-person worship and who's back doing in-person worship, who's not, how it's going, if they're doing communion, all those kinds of questions. Well, unfortunately, uh, we do not have any uh, definitive answers except to recognize that one day uh, we will be back. And in light of that, I want to share this video with you. days we can't get together and church doesn't quite feel the same we sigh and we long for the day when we'll kneel down and pray side by side it's true we know we're more than a building but a sibling would make us feel fine our worship's online but facebook and youtube can't give you the bread and the wine you'll be back wait and see just remember how it used to be you'll be back time will tell when we've kicked this virus back to hell oceans rise empires fall we have seen each other through it all when we finally open the door we will get back together even better than we ever were before da 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 This can't last long and our love will see us through. And then we'll have communion. Our favorite thing, communion. You know you like communion. Mystic, sweet communion. Together, together, together forever. With all your friends and you'll belt out all your favorite hymns you'll say your prayers and pass the peace even with the ones you like the least so wash your hands and just stay well so you'll be here when we ring the bell when we finally open the door we will get back together Better than we ever were before. Da 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 
just uh, couldn't resist that. Someone had emailed that to me this week and I thought we needed a little bit of uh, levity in the midst of um, all the bad news and the craziness. So we will be back someday. I don't know when. Uh, as we uh, begin our worship, I want to take a few minutes now to center ourselves as we listen to the organ prelude by Julie Bagley. I invite you to join together in the call to worship. In Christ, we are a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, God has reconciled us to God's self and given us the ministry of reconciliation. In Christ, God has reconciled the whole world to God's self and entrusted us with the message of reconciliation. Let us pray. All wise God, you long for us to look upon the world through the loving eyes of your spirit. Help us to see as you do, giving ourselves where we are needed and working for reconciliation where relationships are broken. For the sake of Jesus, our Lord, Amen. 
Well, this past Wednesday, uh, our children, some of our children gathered together with Pastor Haley Bay and me for something uh, that we're going to be doing now for the next six weeks on each Wednesday morning as we move forward um, because we don't have Sunday school. It's a way to keep connected with the children and it'll be something like we're going to be doing for Sunday school coming up. We're calling it now Worship Wednesdays and we'll share stories with the kids, uh, God sighting, songs, crafts. Uh, that are all focused on this coming Sunday's reading. So here's what happened uh, this last Wednesday. Welcome everybody Good to, see to you our again. Worship Wednesdays. So we'll be meeting like this for six weeks until we start our new Sunday school year. We'll share our God sightings. So make sure that you've got those God goggles or you can pretend. <laughs> and we'll share a Bible story for the week that goes along with our worship on Sunday morning and an activity, sometimes a craft, maybe a game. And then we'll close our time with a repeat after me prayer. Does that sound good to you? Thumbs up if you agree. Awesome. So we thought we would start today with our God sightings. And I got to tell you, I got a new pair of God goggles. These are good. You can see the love of Jesus in everyone. It does make a big difference. My God was when I helped fix <laughs> Olivia's broken Barbie. My God's fighting is is um so when Elise had no one to um that would push her on the tire swing because we have a tire swing at a park in our neighborhood. Um and then um, I pushed her on the tire swing, but and then after I pushed her on the tire swing, she said thank you and gave me a really big hug. I need to help my mom. So one way to show God's love is helping your mom. Yes. That is so awesome. You're such a big helper. Yeah. I bet your mom loves it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I think my dad always gets donuts every day now. Your donut, your dad gets donuts every day now. Um. Well, he's been doing it for like the past three or two days. Wow, that is so special. That's good. Mm -hmm. This is a book that I bought um, before the whole pandemic start, but I. To read with the, with you all, but I didn't have a chance to read it. It's called One Family. One is one. One lamp, one clock, one book to share. One is two. One pair of shoes, one team of horses, one family. You ever thought of that? One being two? How about one is three? One house of bears, one bowl of pears, one family. And if you, and you see the pears, the bowl of pears there with just three in it, it's one bowl. One is four. One ring of keys, one pile of pups, one family. One is five. One bunch of bananas, one hand of cards, one family. One is six, one line of laundry, one butterfly's legs, one family. One is seven, one bouquet of blooms, one flock of birds, one family. One is eight, one box of crayons, one row of ducks, one family. One is nine. One flight of stairs, 
one collection of rocks, one family. One is 10. One batch of cookies, one shelf of books, one family. One is one and everyone. One earth, one world, one family. And that's the end. Shall we conclude our time together with prayer? Yes. Can you repeat after me? Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For your big love. For your big love. And thank you for helping us. And thank you for helping us. Feel safe. Feel safe. Because of other people who love us. Because of the people who love us. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. To show the love of Jesus. To show the love of Jesus. Even when other people hurt us. Even when other people hurt us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful that we can have uh, Pastor Haley Bay involved in worship even when she's away on vacation. So um, throughout the last few weeks, as we've been reading from 2 Corinthians, we've heard a lot about the struggles that Paul had with the congregation in Corinth. Uh, we heard about his letter of tears uh, and the nasty, angry letter that he wrote. And we heard how the congregation questioned Paul's authority as an apostle. And then we also heard about, uh, in 2 Corinthians and in when we read from 1 Corinthians, some of the struggles that they had with him over spiritual gifts and over communion. It is just a very rocky pastor-congregation relationship. Well, today's reading takes us full circle. And instead of talking about the issues that Paul has with um, the and the divide Paul and the congregation, Paul is talking about reconciliation. And he clearly wants his relationship with the Corinthians to be reconciled. But more than that, Paul is talking about how God, or how in Christ, God is reconciling the world to God's very self. How God entrusts us also with the ministry of reconciliation. So a reading from 2 Corinthians. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, if indeed when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident. Even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. For whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. 
and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, reconciliation is a word that gets thrown around a lot in theological talk. It's one of the words that I consider theological insider jargon, and I don't like to use it because only a small inside group of people understand the theological jargon. But Paul uses it here, so we need to deal with it. The dictionary has a helpful definition of uh, reconciliation. It defines reconciliation as the act of causing two people or groups to become friendly again after an argument or disagreement. The act of causing two people or groups to become friendly again after having an argument or disagreement. Well, that certainly fits the situation in Corinth, uh, where Paul is trying to repair his relationship with them. And it certainly fits what God is doing in Jesus. You see, as Paul's come to understand what God did in Jesus, he understands that God was about reconciling the world to God's self, which is pretty amazing. In other words, God's had this argument and disagreement with God's people in the world. But instead of waiting for people to fix things or waiting for people to apologize or for people to make things right or to start acting better, God's the one who takes action and acts and does something decisive. God's the one who sends Jesus and goes to repair the relationship with humanity. And did you notice what Paul says? He says, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self. He doesn't say that in Christ, God was reconciling people who believed in him, or that God was reconciling only good people, or people who acted right, or people who've repented, or some exclusive privileged group. Paul says, God was reconciling the world to God's self. In other words, reconciling everyone, every person, everybody's included, the whole world, all of creation. And it's that understanding then that causes Paul to say, from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. I think that is one of the most radical statements of the whole Bible. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. In other words, instead of looking at people the way we do or the way the world does as insiders, outsiders, gay, straight, black, white, Muslim, Christian, believer, non-believer, good, bad, conservative, liberal, or any other distinctions. Instead of that, we look at people through God's eyes as new, as belonging to Christ, as people who are reconciled to God. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view because in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self. 
we, us, the whole world, friendly with God, reconciled to Christ because of what God's done in Jesus. And that changes everything. Because now God has entrusted this ministry and this message of reconciliation to us. You see, reconciliation isn't simply some biblical or theological concept that has nothing to do with anything else beyond our faith life. It's a biblical and theological theme that extends to our lives, our personal relationships, our racial relationships, our politics, and to every aspect of our lives together, because reconciliation involves regarding no one from a human point of view. It involves looking at the world and at people through God's eyes, because in Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self. You didn't see it in the video with the kids, but I had the kids draw pictures of someone that they didn't like or someone who was mean to them. We talked about that. And then I had the kids draw a cross on the forehead of their person in their picture, because now we look at people through God's eyes. But sadly, Reconciliation, or looking at people in the world through God's eyes, isn't the way that the world functions, as we so uh, painfully and vividly see in our country right now. If we saw the world through God's eyes, we wouldn't have people who are othered by the majority. If we saw the world through God's eyes, we wouldn't have the racism that still infects our country. If we saw the world and people through God's eyes, we wouldn't have the rhetoric of hatred and anger towards the LGBTQ community. If we saw the world through God's eyes, we wouldn't be talking about hatred toward Muslims or distrust of anyone who is of Middle Eastern descent or efforts to keep refugees out of the country. If we saw the world through God's eyes, we wouldn't have the culture of division that so permeates our country now. If we saw the world through God's eyes, we'd see people reconciled to God and therefore, rather than a world filled with hatred and division and distrust and violence, we'd have the new creation that Paul talks about. Uh, This past week, when the news wasn't dominated by the pandemic uh, with all the politicalization and division, We heard a great deal about Representative John Lewis and his life and his efforts for racial equality. And as I first heard and then later read on Thursday, the final words that were released on the day of his funeral, I was amazed at how connected they were to what Paul says here in 2 Corinthians. And while John Lewis never used the word reconciliation, everything he said was about reconciliation. I want to share, um, you probably have read it or heard it, but I want to share the first paragraph of his final words and then the last couple of paragraphs. So here's the first one. While my time here has now come to an end, I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated simply by human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. That's the reconciliation Paul's talking about. And then here are his last two paragraphs. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the more excellent way. And it is your turn to let, now it's your turn to let freedom ring. 
when historians pick up their pens and write the story of the 21st century. Let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last and, the, and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. That's reconciliation. That's regarding no one from a human point of view and seeing everyone through God's eyes. That's also being ambassadors for Christ. It's God trusting, entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. That's God making real Paul's words. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away and everything has become new. We are ambassadors for Christ. And God has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. Amen. I want to invite you to join together in singing the hymn, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. My life flows on
As a way of confessing our faith during uh, the Second Corinthians series, uh, we've been using uh, various litanies, and uh, Pastor Haley Bay and Janine are sharing uh, today's litany. And I want to invite you uh, to participate in the litany. The words aren't printed for you, but um, Pastor Haley Bay, a number of times throughout the litany, will say, we walk by faith, and Janine will respond, and not by sight. So whenever Pastor Haley Bay says, we walk by faith, please respond, and not by sight. We walk by faith. And not by sight. Our eyes desire. To see what is coming. To know the pitfalls. And the dangers. We long to be. Prepared for action. To know what's needed. And what will work. But life gives no such guarantees. And each new day. Unfolds in turn. Revealing only step by step and stone by stone the path ahead. We walk by faith and not by sight. We look for answers to our questions, our explanations, to our mysteries, logic and reason to help make sense of sudden events and unseen twists. We long to know the cause beneath, the surface view, and shortened sight, a way to understand the world that challenges and keeps surprising, causing us to redirect, amend our plans, and start anew. We walk by faith and not by sight, and somewhere just beyond our view, the Spirit calls and draws us forth upon our path each passing day, assuring us it, it is, is enough. At this point in worship, uh, we are usually receiving the offering. And I wanna thank you for uh, your faithful support and generosity throughout all this time of the pandemic. Uh, your giving enables us and has enabled us to keep our ministries going. And I always remember that without your giving, uh, we would have no ministry. Let's pray together. Make us ambassadors in your world, O God, and let these gifts we offer speak for us in response to your love and generosity. Join us with our siblings everywhere on earth, that all people may be reconciled to you and to each other for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Mitchell Ethan has gifted us with several bell recordings, and we're sharing one of those with you this morning.
As we join together in prayer this morning, uh, just a reminder that the response is receive our prayer. Read by God in Christ to live and love and serve. We pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you gather congregations together by the power of your word, despite being away from our buildings. Bless our church leaders with wisdom and courage to respond with truth and love as they serve their communities and address current events, and as they seek to generate healing, cross bridges, and bring reconciliation in your name. We pray for Presiding Bishop Eaton, Bishop Satterley, and all clergy in the Northwest Lower Michigan Synod, especially Reverend Robert Schmidt at our Savior Lutheran Church in Saginaw. We also pray for our siblings and other denominations, as well as our ecumenical partners. God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of Peace, receive our prayer. Creative God, as we meet you in nature, inspire us to see anew our place in the web of life. Remind us that we are called to pass your gifts on to the next generation. May we find our own restoration in caring for all you have made. God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of Peace, receive our prayer. Sovereign God, you raise up governments to protect the vulnerable. Bless our leaders to be able to tell strength from power, growth from greed, leadership from dominance, and greatness from grandiosity. Inspire a spirit of cooperation as lawmakers work to address current issues and seek the common good. God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of Peace, receive our prayer. Loving God, you desire health and wholeness, yet we are living in a time of illness and separation. Reconcile the conflicts and disputes among us. Teach us to heal traumas of oppression and marginalization. Be with those sick with COVID-19. Break our hearts open to all who are ill, suffer, or mourn, especially Kim, Joseph, Carl, Ed, Sarah, Michael, Bruce, Norm, Harry, Susan, Marilyn and Bobby, God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of Peace, receive our prayer. Consoling God, we grieve those who are no longer with us, although we know they are safe and loved in your eternal home. Keep us united in spirit until that day when we shall see their faces again in your heavenly kingdom. God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of Peace, receive our prayer. Powerful God, you give us courage to stand up for justice, bring healing and hope to victims of violence, hatred, disorder, and unrest. Give us voices to name prejudice and bigotry and use us to stop the marginalization of others. Make us one with you and your love for justice as we deepen our respect for the dignity of every human life. God of Shalom, God of Salam, God of peace, receive our prayer. At this time, we invite you to list your prayer requests in the comments, and we will include those. We pray for our church council as it meets this week. We pray for Lois Huth who's almost 103 and in hospice. We pray for the healing of divisions in our country and for your gift of reconciliation. prayers for those in nursing homes without loved ones, especially Valentino Salazar, who is in his last stages of life. We pray for Linda Rhino as her disease progresses. We pray that you, we would see dignity in all, as hard as that is, and that we will keep on singing of your love and reconciliation. We also continue to pray for the family and followers of John Lewis. We pray that Sherry Corwin's husband gets some relief from his foot pain. 
We pray for our schools and universities as they plan for the upcoming school year. We pray for Pastor Haley Bay, Bryn, and Eva as they enjoy vacation time together. We trust in your faithfulness, O God, to both hear our prayers and respond to them in the way which in the way which serves us and your world best. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we conclude worship today, we want to share again the ULC blessing uh, that we showed last week. And I'm so grateful for all the people who participated to make it happen and for Mitchell Ethan for putting it together. Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er Adonai Panav Elecha Vichuneka. Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha Vyasim Lecha Shalom.
Go in peace. Be reconciled to all. Thanks be to God.